This right here is the KSO Show, your home for K-State coverage. Stay current on what's happening in the wildcat world of sports. By the end, you might want to tell your friends about us. Or not. But hey, you should. Let's get it. The KSO Show returns. Myself and Grant Flanders today. Derek Young is on the road somewhere. Like, this is a vacation for him. So, no, like, praise. He's not out working somewhere. This is uh, is the bachelor party coming up? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, he's got to go, I know, to California and Nashville in some order. That's... And it's going to be a good time for him. He's going to the same place we were at in California. I know. He's going to San Jose. San Jose, yeah. And, yeah. I don't don't think there's even really a party there. I think he just was jealous that he didn't get to go. (laughs) Watch him stay in the same exact Airbnb. He's going out there. He will. He will. (laughs) But so it's just Flando and myself today. No Derek. But Derek will, his spirit is here because I think he gave some questions. So what we're going to do today to the podcast is we want to do a QA, and a but I don't want to be the guy who just always says, okay, members, ask us the questions and do our work for us. <laughs> uh, I got to be a little more creative than that sometimes. So I just said, hey, Flando, why don't you go around, use yep, your brain, yep. use some other brains, uh-huh. and just get some questions to ask me. Don't tell me what they are because it's more fun to be unprepared. And then you and I are just going to discuss them, right? Is it I, that simple? It's that simple. And I, I asked D.Y., and he came back like instantly with oh, 11. He was ready, I was right? like, <laughs> yeah, he was. And I mean, then if it, you have more than 10, it even you know, curtsy. It curtsy. Good. Yeah, I got yeah. like close to 15 Ugh. good questions, I think. Yeah. Maybe even close to 20. Uh, it's going to be a fun podcast okay. with you and me okay. on draft day. It is draft day tonight. <laughs> Bulls pick number seven. I was saying before the before it comes on, you heard it here first. A lot of chatter out there that Zion falling to seven yeah a no. lot of talk I've, i saw i think Woj <laughs> tweeted it he may have took it down though so don't go look for that tweet um but a lot of talk about zion at seven I, we'll see I, I we'll see i i hear you guys are looking for another 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 marketing so maybe great. even so maybe a, like a better than marketing even dean uh, wade uh, dean yeah <laughs> that's true i will say there has been in the last few hours some jackson hayes chatter to the Ooh, bulls which hey, would be I weird guess. because they have the bigs and carter and marketing uh-huh. i don't hate it though because you need more than two bigs um and he'd be like and traditional, I li- traditional yeah and i like, like him i think he's a good, bouncy, good player yeah, you know it's not the biggest position to need but like kobe white i'm not sure if i love kobe white I don't. I tell I, you that. I'm already talking myself into Cam Reddish again, even though he had like the worst freshman season in the history of college basketball. I'm still all about him. We should talk K-State. It's the KSO show, <laughs> not the NBA draft show. Come watch our Twitters tonight. Maybe watch whatever. We'll probably talk to NBA draft. But right now, KSO show. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Let's start off with, uh, I'm, I'm not going to order. These are completely not ordered Good. in any way. I want so you to know ra- random. Yeah, you won't know yeah. any kind of football or basketball question. Good. Here they go. Good. Number one, from D.Y., what concerns you the most about Kansas State recruiting? What a big yeah. question. Yeah, I mean, this, this could be anything. You know, it could be football recruiting, basketball recruiting. Oh, say it again. Oh, well, he, it's oh literally, it you didn't both. even say, yeah, you didn't even say a specific one. What concerns you the most about Kansas State recruiting? Yes. Uh, Nat just got home from walking the dog. What a tough question. I think... I think the most concerning thing to me is that I worry the basketball program has not yet transitioned enough scholarships away from traditional bigs into guards, wings, stretch fours. So you look at K-State's basketball roster, they've got 12 or 13 spots filled as far as scholarships. I wrote this the other day. I, I'm not, I don't freak out that they don't have all 13 filled. There are kids, you know, relatively highly regarded kids. I mean, that people wouldn't have said, oh, what a reach that they could have signed with that scholarship. And they feel good about where their roster is, that they'd rather leave it open for the next year than reach. So it's not about the open scholarship as much. It's just still you've got, when you look at it, you've got two point guards on the roster in Sloan and Sean Neal Williams. Uh, At the wing, two and three spot, you only really have, I think, four guys, four good players, you know, but Cardi, Xavier Sneed, Mike, and Dejuan Gordon. So that's mm-hmm. only four guys. Stretch fours, you only have really two, and they're both true freshmen in Monty and Antonio. Yep. But then you get traditional bigs, and you've got, again, four of those, I think, with Mac, Levi, James Love, and Nigel Shad. That's a spot you're only going to play one guy at a time. Mm-hmm. You know, you might play two point guards at a time. You might play two three wings at a time. You might play two stretch four types at a time. But to have most of your scholarships still in that big spot is probably the most concerning. And I don't know if that's a recruiting. I know I'm dodging it a little bit. Like, he's probably like, what about recruiting? You know, the process, so I'm probably not exactly answering the question right, but that's it, is that within recruiting, they have un- been unable yet to build 
a, a style of roster at, at numbers wise in the basketball program more like they would like. Yeah, I think, I, yeah. I think you're right about that yes. too. Cause they, yeah, because they love one for one. They love their guards. They love their wings. And there you have a bunch of bigs that also. I mean, besides McCall, Mawain, they, and right, not, not a lot of production out of. I those. didn't say Levi too. Did I say I don't know if you I did say Levi? Say Levi. Okay, yep. did, yeah. I mean, but, he's going to have to make a big step forward right. this season. Um, but do you want to take the football side of that, or do you want to just make that a basketball? No, question? I'm just leaving it now. If okay. we get to the, the podcast, and I haven't, you know, been challenged enough on, on that kind of stuff, we'll go with it. But I think I think no. you got some challenges yeah. to come. That's uh, that good. That's good. What gives you What gives you hope and optimism about K State recruiting? A lot. I mean, a lot. And I'm a pie in the sky, you know, glass half full, all that kind of stuff, guy. But with basketball, because I just criticize, I just criticize them. Um, what gives me hope is the class they signed a year ago is is the best class Weber has signed at K State. Dejuan Gordon is probably going to be a star. I think mm-hmm. uh, I think Monty Murphy will live up to the hype that he has had placed on him and made a little further. I think Antonio Gordon will be better than most anybody outside of you and a few posters on the board have suggested. And David Sloan is not. You know, I've said this a million times, so you know, drink if it's a drinking game. But he's not your, he's not your typical JUCO nope. player. So the fact that they just signed their best class, the fact that they just added Nigel Pack, who you know more about than I do, how bad they really wanted mm-hmm. him and how vital that recruitment was to them. I just think you know those are five really good players, um, and I think the momentum's continued in this class. And then for football, I almost don't want to answer the question because I think I'll sound like a fan too much, yeah. you know. But I mean, just in general, the fact they've got. You know, 13 commits, that's 10 more than they had this time last year. It's the most in the Big 12. It's a class that could finish around the top 40 nationally, which I never would have projected. Um, the success they've had in Texas, um, there's a lot to be excited about yeah. uh, on both sides. But um, football might be – football's probably easier. Not that they're doing a better job than basketball – um, cause basketball program, I think your results on the floor signify how good your yep. recruiting is, not what recruiting rankings are. And if mm-hmm. you're winning the big 12 and going to the elite eight and stuff, then your recruiting must be pretty good. And so now the football is doing better, but it's such different than it was before, um, that it's easier to get excited about and talk about. Yeah. I got a kind of a, a question that I came up with to go off. You got of this. your own question? Since, <laughs> since you, since you brought up those yeah. three dudes and, and well, plus Sloan, how yeah. good this recruiting class is for the basketball team. What does that what does that do for the future along with winning a Big Twelve title too? What does that do for the future and then landing kids like Pac and others to come I think, in the future? I think it can be a lot because it's like we had a hundred questions from Scott Wildcat not long ago where he asked me, Is there anything the football program can do? And I, pardon me, I know it's a basketball question, and I'll get to it in a second. Is there mm-hmm. anything the football program can do other than winning to attract a higher level of kid? And my answer in a, you know, in short version was I used to think it was only winning. And now I realize that recruiting momentum, while not as important as winning, uh, is another way, another way to that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's similar with basketball, because the question you just said, like, what does that, what does that do now? I'm not going to, it wasn't a top 25 class. It wasn't a bunch of one and done guys. It's not a class that got a bunch of buzz yeah. nationally, or even was one of the best in the big 12. So it's not like this, this class that just sets your program on fire, but having that momentum and then getting to start off good with pack, I think does make it easier for, for guys to jump in and be part of that. Like I remember the football, it's tough being Nate Matlack and being the first like highly regarded in-state Kansas kid to commit to this new, this new program. But then once you do, there's some momentum, um, in basketball, continuing to show like a guy who was, you know, a guy who was on the U19 team USA mm-hmm. camp, four-star player, Chicago player of the year, you know, that he committed to K-State, signed with K-State, is probably going to play as a true freshman. I think people will see that. Then it will, you know, maybe take a little higher level of kid to say, well, if he would do it, why wouldn't yeah. I? You know, so I think it, I think it does matter. Another question from D.Y. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think is the best case scenario when it comes to the QB in the 2020 class? And oh. who do you like the most? <laughs> and what do you think happens? Well, you know, it's funny because it's just funny to have him asking the question because, like, you know, he already <laughs> yeah. knows like a better answer than I would give. So, no, I know who I like the most, and it's not going to be popular, depending, especially, uh-huh. uh, you know, we we saw on the Twitter and on our site here in the last couple hours, Chubba Purdy will announce his commitment tomorrow. I don't know where he's going. I really don't. You know, I know K State's a possibility. Louisville, so like Michigan State, of course. Mm-hmm. Sparty. Um, the reason I'm saying I don't know is like if I say right now that Hunter Deckers is my favorite, and he is, and then Chubba Purdy commits, this will be like a cold take that tomorrow they're like, oh, I didn't even like Chubba Purdy that much. <laughs> and I do like Chubba Purdy a lot, but my favorite is Deckers. I'm probably biased because I saw him in person. You know, I didn't yeah. see I didn't see Chubba Purdy in person. Um, 
uh, but I'm kind of a sucker for probably the things that aren't as hip to talk about. Like I do care about arm strength and everyone mm-hmm. says, Oh, it doesn't matter. It's accuracy and, and it's your feet and it's decision-making. And those are all true. But I love a guy who has a big arm because you can't teach that. And he has the biggest arm. I think of any of the quarterbacks they're recruiting. Uh, I talked to his dad a lot and his dad is six, four or six, five and that kind of stuff. And I have no reason to believe Hunter Deckers is done growing. And I'm not saying that you should just look at what a coaching staff does to decide who's a better player or that kind of thing. But, like, I look at, like, Iowa State, and they never offered Chubba Purdy despite their brother, his brother yeah. being their starting quarterback. And they already have a, and you say, well, they already have a quarterback committed, so that's mm-hmm. why they didn't. Well, they just offered Hunter Deckers. So they've seen Purdy, they've seen Deckers, and they offered Deckers. So mm-hmm. my point is I'm not the only person who looks at those two quarterbacks and thinks Hunter Deckers is better. Um, so he's my number one. The other was like, what do I think was going to happen? Is that how he worded he it? He said, uh... uh who do you like the most? Because like you said Deckers, Deckers, and then what do you think will what do you think will happen? Yeah, Ugh, I don't know, man. I I'm just not I'm not good. I, I'm tempted to sit here and say Purdy's the most likely for them to get, and I probably believe that, but I still don't think he's likely. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If there's at least three or four reasonable suitors for this commitment tomorrow, then I can't say any one of the yeah. schools is likely. Um, but he's probably the the most likely, and I, I'm just going to flat out dodge the question, like. Uh, I think they'll get one of Deckers, Purdy, or Will Howard. I think it will work out that way. Um, but me guessing or projecting which one it is is just saying something to go out on a limb, and I don't have that kind of courage. You don't have. What do you, what do you think? DUI would say if you had, if you had, if you he devoted. likes Purdy. No, he likes CJ Stroud the best. Yeah. Then Purdy the second. Uh, I think he would say the most likely of any to end up at K State is Purdy, but I think he'd answer it similar to me. I don't think he would say that. Purdy has a better than 50% chance of ending up at K-State, but I think he probably would say he's got the highest shot of any of those mm-hmm. any of those guys. Good stuff. How, do, how does that feel, D.Y.? I know you're listening on your little road trip or whatever. Um, number four here. Have, uh-huh. you, have the past few weeks changed your outlook on what you think of Dejuan Gordon will provide as a true fresh? Yep, they sure have, and I almost feel a little bit silly for admitting it that easily because I've I watched a lot of Dejuan Gordon – um, before, and I've talked to the case coaches a lot about him, mm-hmm. and we've talked a lot about yep. him, and we've talked to him, and I've had every reason to, to be well-versed on how good of a player he is, and I think I still underrated him. And it's like I said, it's kind of embarrassing to say that a couple – couple clips of put back dunks and you know a couple of posts from eric bossy about how good he was at team usa yep. camp changed my opinion but it's true it did and i think i wrote this on the board because i from watching gordon a little bit and talking about him a little bit even though the coaches told me this was more or less wrong i still perceived him as kind of a crafty good but not great athlete undersized mm-hmm. two three um type player and i think he's bigger and longer than i ever gave him credit for he's probably six four six five with long arms He's a better athlete than I ever gave him credit for. As you read bossy stuff, that putback dunk you saw wasn't his one of the best three or four, you know, of Team USA camp. He had another putback dunk over Jeremiah Robinson Earl mm-hmm. um, that bossy talked a lot about. The point is, is if he's, if I if I misjudge his athleticism and athletic gifts, which I think I did, then it did change my perception. I'm not saying now he's the best player on the team or he's going to average 30 minutes a game or any of that kind of stuff, but I used to kind of like when I heard people say, "Oh, Dejuan's going to start and he's going to be a big factor," I would kind of dismiss it like yeah you know you know pump your brakes he's going to be all right but mm-hmm. you know he's going to be a, a bit player this year to where now like it's not crazy to suggest that maybe we get you know three four five games in the big 12 play and he's k-state's third best player you know mm-hmm. i mean that that could happen yeah when before i would have never thought that was his his first year ceiling and now i think maybe it is this one uh was sticking with the the frosh coming in is there a chance Monty Murphy is more impactful right away than Gordon due to his position on the floor? It's a great question because exactly what he said. Like, I mean, I, I mean, I think, you know, in our talks with coaches and stuff, we've straight been told, like, they're going to throw Monty and Antonio mm-hmm. right into the fire and, and they're going to play X at the three. And if that's all the case and they all, you know, and if those words are specifically what they meant and what they said and it, it plays out, then he could start. You know, yeah. Latavius Murphy could. Um all that said, I, st- I still I still don't think so. You know, mm-hmm. I think it's a situation where, and Derek knows this kind of stuff, so I'm not trying to teach him anything. But where I, even if Monty started, I could see him playing less minutes and being a smaller factor than Dejuan would as the sixth or seventh man. Mm-hmm. Um, because, yeah. and this is not NBA 2K or even the NBA, right? Where you have like these two five man rotations that you just rotate in and say, oh, we're gonna put you know, uh, Dejuan on the second unit to be the scorer on that unit. Cause they don't just rotate them like hockey lines, but there is some of that to it where I think you could say, well, let's play Monty alongside of Cardi and X 
you know, who are going to take a bunch of the shots and then our four won't really need to. Mm-hmm. And then let's get Dejuan around, you know, maybe a creator like Sloan and, you know, um, you know, th- those types of bodies mm-hmm. to let him lead that unit. So, uh, it's a good question and he, not crazy. It could happen, but I would still take Dejuan Gordon, in and, that, in that discussion. And then just to keep with the frost, what's, what do you think the pulse on Antonio is like, how much do you impact or if any, does, does he have freshman year? I don't have a good I don't have a good pulse of it because I think I know well I might just ask you I mean yeah. I think you've watched him I know you've watched mm-hmm. him more I saw him in person at father son camp and like I said in the post on the board I'm not so dumb that I'm going to judge a player off what he did in yeah. father and son camp you know messing around but I'd be lying if I didn't say I think if if you're just a guy and you walked in and watched that camp and didn't know who Antonio was and didn't know who Monty was mm-hmm. and just kind of watched what they did, shooting the ball, messing around in scrimmages, you probably would have thought Antonio was a better player. Mm-hmm. He was more comfortable. He was more skilled offensively. Yep. Um, and that's what you saw in, in high school yep. too. So, um, and he doesn't look, he looked awkward to me in pictures and on video. Mm-hmm. And then you see him in person and it's like, oh no, he's just a yeah. big, big, tall, long guy. Mm-hmm. He's not, I don't know. So I know I'm not really answering the question. The point is, because I don't think I have a good handle. Like yep. I thought he was a project. And now I'm just not so sure of that, you know. So what do you th- what do you think? I think he's I think he's like, as you said. I've, I've watched some of his stuff, and when I see him on tape against against Oklahoma competition, but still really long, athletic guy that can hit the three and right. off the off the bounce too. He's not afraid to pull up from way deep. Um, obviously, he's not going to be doing that freshman year or anything. But I think he's a guy that if in a pinch could help you if you have everyone tired you need someone to come in yeah. fresh to score the basketball i don't think he's a guy that's uh right now i think he's going to be a project maybe on the defensive end exactly um but and that's where i think Monty will help even more i think Monty is pretty good defensively and and knows how to uh block the basketball at a pretty decent rate i think antonio is going to have to learn that but uh besides that i think antonio is the more skilled offensive guy that i think in a pinch, you can go to him, and I think in four years he could end up being really, really good. Yeah, I think he's yeah he's got the shot and he's got the length. It's just going to come down to uh, putting it all together and yep. seeing what it looks like on the college floor. It's yeah, like, building up his body and playing defense, yep. like you said, those are the two things I would have concern. Just like you nailed for him as a freshman, is he is what position can he really defend? You know, mm-hmm. as currently constructed physically. Yeah. And that's probably K-State's concern, too. But if that changes, and it will change, he'll he'll get in. He will physically improve yeah. his body and athleticism to whatever extent he can, I'm sure. And if that becomes even a, a, side, a, a side of the floor that he's, a, you know, a wash on, mm-hmm. then he'll probably be really good. Yeah. This is a good question right here from DUI. What hurts K-State the most on the field, losing Zuber, Ryzen, or Justin Hughes? I think I go straight to Justin Hughes. Yeah. Um, and and again, I, I think Zuber was probably well. He had a lot of fumble issues, of course, but he was at least your most experienced, unless Marcus Hayes is eligible. But your most experienced explosive mm-hmm. return guy for one. He also is your leading receiver from the last two years. So while it's easy to criticize parts of Isaiah Zuber's game, and I would too, um, he didn't play to his speed uh, would be the biggest issue. He still was a factor, right? Hunter Ryzen, I think most people would have told you was the best receiver on the team. So still a factor. Um, all that said, I think the depth at linebacker is so poor. And Justin Hughes is, was so easily the best player at that position and the best leader maybe on the defense. To me, it's, it's Hughes, even though I would certainly listen to arguments. Hunter Ryzen is probably a better player than Justin Hughes. I don't know if Isaiah Zuber is. Um, you can make arguments for all three, but I still easily say Hughes because that position's in a lot of trouble. And I think he was one guy who mm-hmm. really got it on this defense. And I think Scotty Hazleton had a lot of faith in right away. Now he has to find it with somebody else. And that's going to be a challenge. I think you're spot on with that. Yes. Yeah, that's a, yes. <laughs> that's a thin, thin uh, position group there. Uh, another question from DY. It's your second year of camps, but first time seeing it conducted by K-State coaches. What has been your impression and did anything surprise you? Yeah, uh, the main thing that surprised me, and not that I didn't expect this, but I wasn't ready for it, was how much time K-State's coaches sincerely spend and give to kids who have no shot at playing at Mm K-State. And I mean that as a compliment. Um, These these camps, I I don't want to get any of the details wrong, but a lot of these families, typically these camps pay money. You know, they they travel to bring their kids to these camps um, from out of state, from in state. And if there's 220, 250 kids to some of these things, in reality – 
five, 10, 12 of them maybe have any FBS potential at all. Mm -hmm. So the vast majority don't. And I, and I think I went to these camps kind of expecting, because it's what I'm doing selfishly. I'm just looking for the, just looking for the K-State recruits. That's all I'm looking yeah. for. That I kind of naturally expect the, the coaches to do the same. Pardon me. And they sure, they sure don't. I mean, the joke I've made is I don't know how many times I've seen a couple of five foot six, 140 pound tight ends who look like they're probably high school sophomores mm -hmm. going against each other for a rep and maybe neither doing particularly well. And that same, that same huddle might have Cody Stuffel being in it or Will Swanson, you yeah. know, like guys that they are going to recruit and Messingham would stop, would pull the guys aside. would talk about everything, everything they did, everything they did, <laughs> um, and really work with them. And I thought it was interesting to me that the stuff you see from the videos from K-State, like on social media and how they coach their uh -huh. players, that's how they coach sophomores from Canton and Galva, too. You know I mean? Yep. And I just think that's meaningful. I think it shows what kind of people they are. Um, they're not, they're not going to use those camps only to talk to recruits um, or to move. And yeah. I was just messing him. I saw every coach and player, every coach and player out there doing it. So that's the biggest thing I've learned is maybe that's the case at every camp, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not unique to K-State, but it was a learning experience for me to know that those camps, the coaches don't just look at them as, oh, we're just recruiting. Like, they run a camp. They are getting paid to do a job. They do a good job, and I think the kids enjoy it. Just some good guys, mm -hmm. sounds Pretty like. much, pretty much, you know? <laughs> uh, since the facility master plan has been uh, – since the facility master plan has been billed and distributed already – so I think he's saying the uh -huh. master plan has been distributed uh -huh. We've already. Seen pictures and yeah. stuff, right? Yeah. And after two consecutive years covering Kansas State sports now, seeing what we have been been inside the programs, what facility under uh, upgrades or additions are needed for both sports? Um, for football, the immediate first thing that comes to mind is the indoor practice facility. Um, it's awkward going to those camps yeah. where they split them up into two different camps. Like then they'll go do the O line D line stuff. And they'll, and they'll send them all inside. Um, I know people will say, oh, it's pretty close. What a big deal. No, there's some awkwardness when you have to tell these recruits or all these kids, like, yeah, our indoor is not right by. You've got to leave the stadium. Mm -hmm. You've got to walk around Bramlage. You've got to go down this hill and go in there. Yep. And then the building itself, it's pretty old. It's not particularly mm -hmm. nice. So that's the biggest the biggest issue is the, is the awkward length you have to walk to get to the, the indoor practice facility and then it not being particularly nice because like while well, kansas for example has a lot of bad facilities their stadium's mm -hmm. terrible um they've got some nice things like that their outdoor practice facility also right by the stadium really nice setting where k-states is not you know mm -hmm. that kind of thing so it's just from a logistic perspective those places those practice fields are not in good places you know yeah. for k-state um basketball it's Br it's Bramlage, you know, which is a big, you know, broad, you know, broad answer. But the ice complex is great. It's also really, really close to Bramlage. They yep. need to have it, and I think they will when they do renovations. It needs to literally be connected yep. if possible. And I think we've heard that. Which it I think is they're going to be, right. Yeah. I mean, which I think is part of the plan and what we've heard anyway. Because right now it's pretty easy. You know, mm -hmm. you just walk out, go upstairs, walk out back to where you're at Bramlage. It's yep. not it's not like the football stadium to the outdoor or the indoor practice stadium type situation. But I think I think Bramlage just, and I'm not a Bramlage hater. It just needs a lot of work. Um, from a connectivity standpoint to ice, and then just from an aesthetic standpoint, inside yeah. and outside. I mean, um, I think there's a lot they plan on doing to make it easier for spectators uh, and to be more appealing to recruits, and it all sounds pretty good to me. I don't think Bramlage is a lost cause, especially because it's a great atmosphere inside when people show up and care. Um, but there, it just, just in general, Bramlage, and I think making it a prettier building to look at and easier for fans to get into will help that program. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I'd agree with that 100%. What is the – here's another back-to-basketball question. What is the conference record for Kansas State basketball that would make you f feel that they've exceeded Ooh. expectations? So next year, I'm mean, obviously yes. uh, – I mean, you play, what, 18 games? Mm -hmm. Not, you know, nine teams, double it up. Yep. I mean – this is incredibly early because like, I haven't sat down and broke down. Okay, I mean, I have to actually have. I'm lying a little bit. But I haven't like written, sat down and written down. Like, I would rank the Big 12 like this, and this is what this team has back. Uh, I think if they go I, – I picture 10 and 8 as being fourth place range. Mm -hmm. um, I think if they're better than 10 and 8, I think anything 11 and 7 or better will exceed my expectations. And I don't, I don't think like 9 and 9 would be a failure by any stretch. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably about where my expectations might lie. Yeah. But if you get better than 10 and 8 – and you start going 11 and 7, that kind of thing, that's when it would feel like, okay, you've seen, you've probably significantly exceeded my expectations. Yeah. I, yeah. I think I'd be right around the same area. Um, yeah, I think 11 wins or more, I'd be 
I'd be saying, yeah, I didn't expect this, but I, I don't expect them to be seventh in the league. I expect them to be around that four, maybe five range. And then if they can get to third, top three in the league, then yeah, that's exceeding my expectations. Matthew Polamau just uh, retweeted old Chubba Purdy's announcement for tomorrow tweet there are a couple of a couple of friends mm. Paul Mao knows him and mm-hmm. been talking to him and stuff he's still working on him man i don't i don't i don't know it'd be exciting it'd be exciting Ooh. Ooh. i told nats you know this is most like obviously around she's like she's like that's not his name right and i was like <laughs> i had to show her the screen and say no that's that's his that's his name it's so, awesome so yeah i mean uh, i wonder what the the family dynamic is too with the purdies if, right. they, if he does come to k-state what that would be like pl- playing each other. I mean, they pro- might not right. even see each other by the time Shabba even play. I, I feel like that's the—I bet you—K-State has a lot of great draws. But I bet you if they get Chubba Purdy, I bet that was subconsciously a big draw yeah. for him and that family to say, no, let's go play in the same league. Uh-huh. Let's watch our kids play against each other yep. for, you know, two, three years, whatever mm-hmm. it is. They're within, what, four or five hours of each other. I think I think aside from everything K State offers itself as a university and what Chris Kleiman's done and the, and the stuff with Carson Wentz and the relationships, I think the, I think if K State wins, whether the Purdy's admitted or not, I think it'll be like a desire to say, "Now nah, let's get all our kids in the Big Twelve. K State, Iowa State, yeah. close, couple of great programs, chances to play. Let's let's go do it. Yeah. Be, be Purdy fun." <laughs> <laughs> I wonder too if died the, inside a little the bit Iowa State non committed not committing to Chuba is like. The them saying, oh, these guys don't really get along. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> I, I wonder, I because I talked about the Deckers Purdy thing earlier where they offered Hunter Deckers but not Chubba Purdy. Maybe maybe there's a simple explanation yeah. to that. Maybe they've just said, hey, we're not, you know, and maybe the family agrees. Maybe yeah. we're not, we're not going to get into the awkwardness of having two brothers. Yeah. On one well, hand, you that's think that'd be the most awesome thing in the world and that's a natural reaction, but there'd be some, yeah. some struggles with that too. So maybe, maybe they're intentionally not doing maybe that. Maybe they hate know. each other. Hated maybe each other they do. The high school teams. Maybe they've hated each other like forever. When they, when they, yeah, when they played on you know? the same team, it just doesn't work <laughs> yeah. because they both want to be quarterback yeah. like well we'll start that rumor if it gets to k-state we'll like say uh, unnamed sources per, uh purdy what's up another p word that suggests rivalry like a purdy per, few but i mean another p word for rivalry purdy, purdy problems purdy problems yeah <laughs> i mean that's <laughs> unnamed double sources. p's purdy unnamed sources. problems yeah purdy problems question mark which is an angry looking picture of brock purdy on our front page uh. and then no story like we don't even write in whether you click on it there's no words in there oh. it's just yeah, Brock and Chuba, uh-huh. two good names, right? Definitely. Um, just a couple more from from Dy. Good. Here's a, here's a long question. Let's see if I can't stumble through yeah. it. Uh, what is the overall record for Kansas State football to make you feel like they well, exceeded for expectations? But he adds, additionally, if they were to make a bowl, what is the biggest positive from it? Uh, that they get extra pr- practices for climbing to continue uh-huh. for implement. His, implementing his system and culture and develop his roster or to break the stigma of him being an FCS coach over his head. All great stuff. Why does DY get to like roll three <laughs> questions into one question? It's like, I need quit. I know. I it's can, like I, we I say can go we, back through it too. No, no, no. I, I got it all. I'm making, this, I'm criticizing one of our coworkers right now yeah. because we're like 10 questions. Then he sends you 11. <laughs> and within each question, he includes three questions. Yeah. So there's like 32 questions in his 11, but it's good. Like I said, I want a long podcast. Know, I'm, not, exactly. I'm not complaining. Um, what record would exceed this is going to probably break some hearts and people can, you know, tweet at me at Matthew <laughs> underscore D underscore hall on the Twitter or on the board because I'm setting the bar too low. But if they go six and six, that would exceed my expectations. Yeah. Like I think five and seven is when I'm probably going to pick this team to go. I know six and six is only one game better, but there's only 12 games in football. Like mm-hmm. one game's a big difference. I think in this season, six and six and five and seven are drastically different results. Um, so I think six and six would exceed my expectations. And making a bull, the reality of it, I can't decide. I think the right answer is the practices are more important. It's natural for fans or media to say, no, he needs to shake that stigma. He needs to lose this FCS, can't get to a bull, can't compete. Um, that's, but that's for us to talk mm-hmm. about. You know what I mean? And it does impact recruiting. But I think if they're going five and seven, six and six, seven and five, you know, with those results, well, I think that's a different, extremely different result amongst the fan base. I don't think uh, I'm just going to use a big time Kansas player's name. I don't think Turner Corcoran is going to. I think if he sees K State go five and seven, I think he's still going to go to Nebraska. I'm just using him as an example. You know, I think I think that would let him know. Hey, you know what? Anybody who said they couldn't do anything, mm-hmm. they won five. Or, they won four, five, six games. They're going to be fine. It was their first year. They're rebuilding. Nebraska won four last year. You know, under Scott Frost. Yep. 
So I don't think they need to go to a bowl to change perception among recruits, but among fans, yes. But is that most important? No. So I'm going to go ahead and say it's the practice time to continue installing their system to, con- you know, to continue getting better at what Chris Kleiman wants to do. And there's going to be a lot. Of, I mean, we talked about the roster breakdown a lot. They've got, what is it, 20, I, I want to say 20, like 38 freshmen and true f- freshmen and redshirt freshmen on the mm-hmm. roster. That's almost half their scholarships. Almost half your scholarships are in those two classes. Um, extra practice is really going to matter especially yeah. when those guys aren't young any, i mean they're not you know the whole line oh they're not freshmen anymore because the end of the season at that point they'll have been through a whole season so those practices will be very meaningful for them young them youngins <laughs> them youngins them mm-hmm. young bloodins um did i answer all nine of the questions I for the next question did. i think so <laughs> <laughs> i want to i want to say oh boy eight and four would be exceeding expectations to me because i think the ceiling ceiling uh-huh. is seven and five for uh-huh. this team um, it'd still be, I think, great season for them, seven and five. So are you I saying six and six is more your thoughts? Six and six is though? probably what I'm going to, yeah. Yeah, and so then I, would, I would agree. Seven, yeah. five, eight, and four would be mm-hmm. exceeding it if you think six and six is normal. So yeah. if they go five and seven, you're probably on fire train. I know. Because, like you said, Scott, yeah. Scott Frost, four wins at Nebraska, so he, they could right. win one game. And I, <laughs> there you go. There you go. Beat Nichols and you're in. Beat Nichols and you're I'm in. in. Sign him up for another. That's right. Extend him, extend him at that point. <laughs> extend him. He gets that first win. I mean, K-State barely beat South Dakota last year in the opener. Really should not have by all intents and purposes. So this year you get a strong win in week one. That's clear improvement. I say tack two more tack two more years in the contract. Eight-year deal. That's Double exactly, the buyout. That's, that's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> Double the buyout. Uh, last question from D.Y. Good. Good. Now this one... Uh, it's a personal one. Do you think D.Y. Mm-hmm. will be able to completely be hands-off when it comes to recruiting coverage on his vacation? No. There's, <laughs> ze- there's no. zero chance of there's it. There's no like, way. I think he should feel like he should be, and I think yeah. we'll do pretty well. But there's no chance he will be. But it's because of what I learned like on my Miami vacation. And like this is going to be super sappy, but it's because like he loves doing mm-hmm. it. And I got some really nice messages. And I mean that if you're listening to this and you sent me a message on vacation suggesting for me to take it easy, that mattered to me. Yeah. And it did impact me taking it easy. Yeah. So thank you. But what I said back to some of those people, and I really meant, it's like, I wake up and I want to do yeah. it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, so he's going to, yeah, he's got a couple of days where it's going to be nice <laughs> not, to, not to think about, you know, contacting a kid or... You know, he's got 35 updates written and saved in the computer. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, if, I know. <laughs> if, if a good quarterback from 2027 commits, we'll have a story yeah. from Derek ready to go on it. I mean, my point is, like, no, he's not going to stay away from it because he's going to be interested mm-hmm. in it. I mean, he just likes it too much to not look at it. I hope he doesn't feel like he needs to do work with it. But he's, he's going to be on the board probably every day. Yep. Um, he'll probably write some stuff. But if he's listening, like, he, does, he doesn't need to. Yeah, for sure, because we're gonna be fine. We're yeah. going to camp tomorrow. I know you and me. What's that? Is that like two o'clock camp? Yeah, two it's to six, a, I think. You know that yeah. is we'll it, and it's, it's in town, isn't it? Yeah, it's at the, it's oh. at the stadium. We're gonna be fine. Gosh. And then we've got other stuff. We got other camps we're gonna go to. Why DY is gone? We're gonna go. We're gonna yep. see. I think we're gonna see Sharp some stuffle bean. We're, yeah, we're gonna see some Hadley Panzer. Mm-hmm. I think we're gonna get some pictures, some oh, videos, some interviews. You know, the nice thing is when we go. So we're not supposed to interview kids. You know this at K State's yep. campus. Like mm-hmm. we're not allowed. Like if they're on campus, we're not supposed to like record them and interview yep. them because it could be seen as whatever. But when they're at a show, we still we'll talk to them. Yeah. Like say, hey, what's up, man? Congrats. You know, give uh-huh. me a high five. That kind of thing. But as far as interviewing and writing stories off of that, we can't. Um, but at the Sharp Camp, we can. That's yeah. that's Salina, man. I know that ain't that ain't K State's property. That's you know that's the big out west, that's the big out <laughs> central. Most would say you know, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. Did you go to Sharp Camp last year? No, I was tell you what. I'll tell you what. We went and ate pizza afterwards and stuff. They got, got a pizza? place there. Hey, Nats, remember the name of that place in Salina? What's it called? Like the Blue the Gambinos, blue the Blue something <laughs> Brewery, Blue Blue Sky Brewery. Mm. And I'll be darned if Jake Sharp didn't buy our food. He did last year. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, he showed up, bought our stuff. Now you almost got to expect. He's a Jayhawk it. though, so I can't appreciate <laughs> it. Right? He's a very nice man, he's, and he's in very good shape still. Did, did you guys did you guys bull bull crap about the Jayhawks? Oh, oh no, he didn't. And he's not. The, he didn't. The he didn't cats. He's not one of those guys. Not one of those like, guys. No, gonna... he's not. Like I'm sure he still has a lot. Of, I'm sure he has a lot of KU pride. He should. He played football there. He put a lot of effort into it. But he's not one of those guys who's gonna be like, oh, K okay, State. So we're gonna get 15 in a no, row. No, no, <laughs> no, no. That's not. That's not Mr. Sharp. <laughs> so I got some Kurtz questions. He's got. He's got uh, about. It's nice four to take here. a break. I mean, like I had some tough, <laughs> make you think, tough questions, and now I'm gonna get you know. Hey, what's my favorite number? You know, stuff like that. So, um, 
Now, this is a question that you might have answered in, in uh, one of DY's questions, but it's worded a little differently. I'll just answer it differently. How, how, high, how anyway. high is the ceiling for K-State hoops next year, and have we overlooked how high it could be? It's pretty high. I mean, and, and that's the term of, uh, and I like to define things to make it clear to people. When we say ceiling, yeah. like we're not saying you should expect this yeah. to happen yep. or this is probably going to happen. But hey, if a lot of things came together, this could happen. Yep. I think the ceiling is now of a team that would maybe spend some time in the top 25, you know, a top five or six seed in the NCAA tournament. And there'd probably be a point in the Big 12 schedule where you're looking, where we're sitting there on a KSO show yep. looking at it and saying, oh my gosh, you know what? If they won these two and these two teams dropped these two, all of a sudden, like they're back tied for the lead in the conference. I think that's the ceiling, a season where they're a fringe top 25 team where they flirt with Big 12 contention, but probably never really mm -hmm. contend at late for winning the title and then have a chance to be a top five or six seed in the NCAA tournament. I think that's a, ce a ceiling um, that's possible. And that would take, it would take some stuff going their way, but not a lot. I, I think I wrote the other day, like you've got four guys in Mac, X, Cardi, and Mike, who if they get no better, and all four will get better, but if they get n no better at all, that's four experienced good Big Big 12 basketball players mm -hmm. and not many Big 12 teams have that yep. they might have better stars or better players here and there but you go down the roster it's hard or down the Big 12 it's hard to find teams that have four experienced good Big 12 players K-State has that so then it becomes to me you've got a quintet or so of guys of Sean Neal Williams mm -hmm. David Sloan Dejuan Gordon Montavious Murphy maybe Antonio Gordon mm -hmm. or maybe Levi Stockard whatever where the, if they get two or three guys to become good players this year out of that group now you've got seven and that doesn't have like a lot of depth, but really go back, go go through last year's Big 12 standings. Look at Texas Tech. Look at K-State, the yep. two teams that won it. Did you really, can you really get further than seven good players, mm -hmm. seven or eight nope. good players? No, you can't. Now, having that, now that doesn't mean they'll be as good as K-State last year because they won't have Dean Wade or Barry Brown or Camp Stokes. But I'm just saying, like, it could suddenly become a roster that's not that much worse than last year's if a lot of things go K-State's way. So I think the ceiling is fringe top 25. Top five, top six seed in the NCAA tournament. That's that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good too. I think you nailed it. I, I, I mean, I could say. Would you uh, go higher or lower if I forced you to raise it up a notch or take it down a notch? I'd honestly I'd take it up you. a notch. Up a little yeah. bit. Of a notch. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, yeah, X coming back and they're a very confident program. Yes, and yeah. and yeah, that's. I mean, it's exciting to cover. You know, like mm -hmm. I think it's a team that can really could make some waves. And I mean, not not going to be as good as last year, won a Big Twelve title, but. I, I, I could see this team being second or third in the Big 12. And it being, that would, I mean, be amazing. They're going to expect that of themselves. Yeah, and that yeah. is part of the battle. I mean, like, whether it's realistic or not, they're going to have a lot. Those four guys I just mentioned, I mean, all four of those guys have been key players on a team that went to the Elite Eight and then won the Big 12. Yep. So none of those four guys, you always say set the bar really high or whatever. They have reason to believe that. Mm -hmm. Like, we could go to K-State and tell the football program, hey, your goal should be to win the Big 12. And it probably is. But deep down, none of those guys have done that yeah. at K-State, you know, or got close. When, you're, when four, your four best players have all done that once or twice, it becomes easier to believe that you're going to do it mm -hmm. again. Another question from Kurtz. Bossy said Gordon is the best Frosh Bruce has mm. brought to K-State. Is he really going to be better than Marcus Foster was as a freshman? I don't think so. And that's... And Bossy knows more about it than I do. I don't doubt that he's a better athlete and better player as a high school mm -hmm. senior than Marcus Foster. But like, I just, I just think that's really high. I'm going to pull up. What were Marcus Foster's freshman stats? I'm going to pull him up. Yeah, look him up. Marcus Foster, Kansas State. Um, he was a killer out there. Because he, he was he was just really good. Oof. I mean, so as a freshman, he was all Big 12 second team by the coaches, all Big 12 second team by the AP, Big 12 newcomer of the year. Um so, I mean, that's, that's obviously pretty good. Yeah, that'd be a, um, a lot as to look As a freshman, I'm just trying to find the stats here. Just see, like, oh, they don't have them. I mean, I'm sure if I go, if I make any further effort, I'll find what they were. But, I mean, the guy was a second-team All-Big 12 player as a, as a freshman. Mm -hmm. Is basically what I, just, what I just read, if I think I'm correct. Um, I just don't think Dejuan Gordon's going to be that. But I sure didn't, I sure didn't think Marcus Foster was going to be that. Yep. You know, if I could go in a time machine somehow, and you ask me right before Foster's freshman year, you know, and compare me to Dejuan Gordon, who's better, I'm going to say Dejuan yep. Gordon. So I know I'm talking against myself. My answer is no. He's not going to have as good of a year yeah. as Foster did just because I think that's an incredibly high ceiling to set. Mm -hmm. But um, he could. I think another thing to add, I think this current team has more offensive Still more weapons than that one did. Than yeah. that one did. And yet, or at least more experienced yeah. guys. And yeah. had to lean on Marcus a little bit for some scoring here and there. 
Because that team had to play freshman Marcus a bunch, freshman Wes a bunch, yep. right? Um, and there was more beyond it that. Was, Nigel uh, Johnson maybe yeah, played a little I bit. Think, Jedlin, <laughs> no, was he on? I mean, I think I, he was. there was experienced guys in that team too. I mean, but it was a lot of youth. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. So, so yeah. Um, two more here. Who, who will play more career NBA games, Dean Wade or Barry Brown? I think it's Dean Wade. Yeah. And I feel somewhat confident in that. Like... The question with Wade is health, of course. Mm-hmm. But if he if he's healthy, Wade has spots in the NBA. Whether yeah. it's a, depending on different lineups, blah blah blah, he can play all sorts of different spots. But he can shoot, and he's athletic, and he can switch on defense. So he can play in the NBA. When I say play, I don't mean start. I don't mean whatever. But he can play in the NBA. It was Barry Brown, and I hope he I hope he proves me wrong, and he's proved a lot of people wrong his whole career. He's going to have to be a point guard in the NBA. He said as much as self, yep. and I just don't. I just don't think he is. Like mm-hmm. that's the only position he can play in the NBA, um, and that's his. And, that, and that's when you're. And that's his only path. When he's not a great ball handler, he's not a great shooter. I don't think he's a great playmaker. He's a good finisher and good at getting into the rim and a very good defender. So there are of course there are systems that would be valuable in. I just think Wade has uh, a game that that is much more easy to translate mm-hmm. to the NBA. Um, and I know there's the injury concerns, but I would still roll the dice on Wade and play more games than Brown. How about the? I, I, th- I could just see Wade just nailing corner threes all day oh, long all day. for a team coming off you the know. bench. Just yeah, like prime. That's, that's supposed to be switch sounds. Like prime Chandler <laughs> Parsons. Yeah, you know. Yeah, Whew. that's prime that's Chandler the, that's the ceiling. That's the ceiling. <laughs> well, that's probably but then continued. But, yeah. but then prime poor man Chandler Parsons. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um. What do you think of those lavender mock-ups for I football? I think they're great. Yeah. Um, I think they're great. And I'm not usually like a big, you know, hot take guy or like, you're wrong if you don't like them because it's all in the eye of the beholder. But I don't know how people look at those and don't think they're awesome. Yeah. I really don't get it. I know it's a light-colored jersey, you know. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm biased because I'm a Chargers guy and I love the powder blues and it feels like the K-State version of powder blues. They look awesome, <laughs> they though. Like, they do when look. he added the white outlines around the numerals, like mm-hmm. I just think they look great. I think with white pants, they'd look great. I'd be curious to see with dark purple pants, although that's risky, but white pants, white helmet mm-hmm. with those. Oof. I don't know how people look at that and don't think it looks good. And it would still identify as K-State to me because if they don't change the design, even if the pants are white and the jersey's lavender, the design's still the same. They're still featuring colors that are clearly in K-State's color mm-hmm. wheel. You know, I still think if you flipped it on and saw the team in that uniform, you'd think, is that K-State? You'd probably first think, that's probably K-State. Yeah. I don't think it's going to confuse you about who it is. Uh, I think recruits would love, I mean, I know they would love it. Every basketball recruit only wears the lavender uniforms. Yep. And we talk to them about it and ask them, you know, why do you wear the lavenders? And like, cause we like them the best <laughs> football would too. They, I, I mean, it's like how football every always kid, wears the white helmet every, when yep, they take their picture. I, yeah. 90% of kids, if they went to those, if they had those as an alternate uniforms, I would estimate 90% of kids recruits would do all their recruiting pictures in those mm-hmm. lavender uniforms. I and that so matters. Too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And they look hot. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I guess one more question I got is... Are those all Kurtz's questions? Yeah, that's all he had? That's all he had. So Kurt sent you two questions like, how good is Kate State <laughs> basketball? <laughs> that's what he could come up with. Uh, uh, good old Kurtzy. Yeah. Uh, appreciate you, though, buddy. Let's, uh, let's think, is there anything we haven't covered, right? I mean, basketball-wise, Dejuan Gordon, Team USA didn't make it, but we've kind of, you know, we've talked about his game a mm-hmm. lot. Mm-hmm. Nothing else. You what, know. Do you think of, what do you think of the, uh, the new, the new uh, stretching out the three-point line? I don't um, I think it's going to affect K State at all. But. No, no. I mean, I know that's probably the wrong answer. It yeah. probably will affect them tremendously. I just look at it as a thing. Like everyone's still playing by the same rules. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think I don't think K State uniquely has players who could make shots from twenty one feet, but not twenty two mm-hmm. or whatever the exact difference is. So could it impact it? Sure, um, but I think the more likely scenario is it probably impacts schools similar from yeah. top to bottom yeah. we'll have to see how it affects the game you know if mm-hmm. teams take less threes more threes if it spreads out stuff for the post more um i but i just i just don't really think it does but that's a good question we know about david sloan we talked about him yep. you've talked about yep. him found out he had a broken left wrist yep left right? wrist he's a he shoots with his right hand so, so that's good that is good you know football wise i mean i don't want to give away the world in recruiting info like we did in naperville um, so hopefully, if you're listening to this at this point, you're you know you're subscribed and reading it because mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of stuff good going, a lot of good stuff going on. But what we're coming up on the 21th, that's t- 21st. That's tomorrow, mm-hmm. the 21th. I was going to say the 21st is tomorrow. That's a big, it's a big recruiting weekend. Oof. A lot of commits, a lot of already committed kids in town, but it's going to be big and we'll be all over it because we got rid of 
our weak link in DY. Yep. Uh, <laughs> we're going to just be killing it. Yep. Oh, yep. Over there. Um, I feel like Holy I cow. Yeah, yeah, we have not talked about the tap house at all. Oh, my gosh. Tap I, took, house, I went to the tap Baker. house two days ago. I haven't um, been there in a while. How was it? With Logan, uh-huh. I'll tell you a little bit about. Yep. It was really good. It was. I'd been a while since I had been there, too, and it was really good. I've been seeing that the, they've been tweeting out. I think it's the Tap House. They've been having live music this summer. Oh. Um, I've been retweeting that a little Up bit. Top. Up top too, Ooh. yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just saying, like, they're a great sponsor. They're really good to us. Yeah, we bring them up because they pay us. We're not going to lie to mm-hmm. you, but they are the places that we go in Manhattan. That we really do the mm-hmm. Tap House, Bourbon and Baker, Harry's. We don't go to Harry's as much. I'm not going to lie to you, not because it's not good, but it's just not as we we're more in and out, yeah. you know, like kind of thing. So we're more Bourbon and Baker yeah. and Tap House. But you know, what? one more question. really I... bad for not bringing them up at the start <laughs> of the show. No, I know, and we can bring them up again after this question. Okay, okay. So we yeah, brought them up twice. I want to ask you. Who do you think, because Barry and Cam are gone. Those were your guys you leaned on offensively mm-hmm. to score the basketball. I mean, you saw X, you saw right. Cardi come in. Who's going to be the scorer, the guy that you look to the most? I think it's going to be Cardi. Yeah. And I know that I know the answer is supposed to be X, mm-hmm. and I think the perception out there right now is that he's the face of the program. I've even written that, so like I'm part of that. And I think he is. I think he'll be their best player next year, yeah. Xavier Sneed. But I think both of us know that there's nobody on the roster – unless Dejuan yeah. Gordon can, who creates his own shot and can score from multiple levels, whether it is threes or getting all the way to the basket, better than Cartier mm-hmm. Jada does. And, you know, that's never being a focal point of the offense. Yeah. Now he will be. Yeah, I, I don't even have to think twice. I think it'll be Cartier Jada, yeah. even though Xavier Sneed, I think it's fair to say, will be the best player on mm-hmm. the team. It is interesting. I didn't even, to not disrespect him, I should say Cam Stokes, too, because those were probably three. You did say You're, Cam. You actually said Barry and, you actually didn't say Dean, which was interesting. Oh, I yeah, just let so it go. Dean, yeah. Barry, and Cam, probably yep. your three best scores leaving, or at least Correct. you looked at them to score the most. And the three that could create their own shot yep, the best. exactly. And shots for others. Yep. Yeah. And they're all leaving, so. But Cardi awesome. has a great um, ability to create shots for others. I mean, when he came back against Iowa State, and then who they, well, they lost to Iowa State. Yeah. Um, he created so many wide mm-hmm. open. I mean, it was it was alarming because we'd gone eight, nine games without watching him. And so we got into the new yep. normal of K-State. And you watch that game, and I don't know how many wide open corner threes he created because you yeah. can't keep him out of the lane. And so, and it was like, oh, my gosh, I forgot he can do that. Yep. So um, he'll be a great shot creator for them, too, I think. I think it was, it'd be, he also showed us in that game that he can pull up. Yep. Step back, pull up from yep. three and hit that. I mean, yep. it doesn't look the greatest. When it goes in, you're like, that was hot. Right. So, right. Yeah. But, I, I mean, I think that's everything. Bourbon and Baker, Harry's, Tap House, all those places once again. Camps this weekend. Big 12 Media Day is coming mid-July. Middle of July, Big 12 it's Media time, Day. It's time for the KSO in. show to start like, ramping up again. Like, it's yep. time, you know, we've had our time away. We've taken it easy, you know. Yep. But we're here. We're going to have some stuff to talk about. So okay. we're going to come to you all the time. Hey, mm-hmm. thanks for listening. This was Dale Hall and <laughs> Matt Hall and Grant Flanders signing off the Kansas Show. Tell your friends. <laughs> <laughs>